Uh, hi, my name is Bruno Silva. I'm one of the dentists at Brighton Implant Clinic and just doing a short video today to talk a little bit about um, kind of risks and complications uh, when dealing or when having dental implant treatment. Now, there aren't really uh, many risks or many uh, serious risks uh, when having this kind of treatment. It's really safe. Um, it's actually been perfected and improved on uh, over, a over a long period of time and I mean the techniques available today are really really uh, very predictable working really well across a wide variety of patients and cases. So uh, when looking at dental implant uh, problems rather than risks we could talk about risks complications of having this kind of treatment. So first of all if you're having an implant or having uh, some kind of uh, dental implant surgery uh, the most common like effect or complication of having this uh, surgery would be uh, post uh, treatment swelling, some discomfort. Um, this is obviously because of the invasive nature of having uh, uh, surgery. Um, afterwards it's a normal reaction for your body to actually have some pain, some discomfort, some swelling. Um, all of these usually your dentist will be prescribing some painkillers, some medication for swelling and also just to together with um, these pain uh, medications they will be uh, giving you some antibiotics just to be on the preventative side to prevent any infections. <clears throat> so um, quite commonly um, it will vary from person to person. Uh, pain is quite subjective so with some patients we're quite surprised we don't see them with uh, much pain. Uh, they get on with their normal daily lives one day after surgery um, many of them, even the day of surgery, they, you know, uh, working normally and um, feeling quite normal. But it doesn't mean that something's wrong if after one or two days you are still feeling pain and discomfort after having dental implant surgery. Uh, traditionally, I would tell, normally, I would tell patients that having a tooth removed is more painful than having an implant. And I think that's quite true. Uh, many times patients will come and say, that they felt a lot of pain after having a tooth removed but the implant was relatively straightforward uh, very little pain. Um, bruising is also sometimes seen um, more so with kind of a bigger more invasive procedures sometimes procedures involving uh, wisdom teeth removal or multiple implants it's not uncommon to have bruising you know on the face on the neck as well and quite rarely sometimes also under the eyes um, but it's very rare but you know in certain cases we will see some bruising usually within you know five to seven days that will kind of subside so moving on to one of the most common complications or problems of or when having implants and although this is very rare, um, dental implant failure does unfortunately happen. And what this basically means is that the implant just doesn't fuse with the uh, bone tissue. So usually that uh, integration phase whereby the implant actually um, adheres or binds to the, the, to the bone tissue, sometimes, usually about 1 in 10 or 1 in 20, um, depending on the complexity of treatment, sometimes that fusion just doesn't occur. Um, you might not know that um, the implant's failing. This is not always associated with pain, but um, you know, after he the healing period, if you go back to the dentist, the dentist will take an x-ray just to check that the implant has healed. And unfortunately, on some occasions, we see that the implant hasn't integrated. Um, it means that the implant is not healing as it should be, and the dentist will need to remove the implant. It doesn't mean that you can't have implant treatment again, but in many cases what we do is we remove the implant, we clean the area thoroughly, we wait for the area to heal, and then we can reattempt to place the implant again after a suitable healing, healing phase. So if an implant fails, it doesn't always mean that um, it can't be treated again, but you will need to allow enough time for that area to heal before further implant placement can take place. Um, other complications, for example, like um, damage to, um, you know, kind of more serious complications arising from surgery and arise when 
um, you know, mistakes or accidents happen. Um, this is very, very rare. And um, usually it's more a case of down to precise planning when having implant treatment. So for example, um, because we're working in an area of your body that has many blood vessels, nerves, teeth, and bone, um, we need to be absolutely sure when placing an implant that we have enough room, enough space, and a, a generous level of safety from all these structures for the implant to be placed. Now, at the clinic here, we use what's called the 3D CT scan, and that basically gives us a three-dimensional picture, which is vastly superior than having um, uh, just a two-dimensional image like an X-ray. So we're able to seek not only the height, the width, the density, the thickness, and also like the quality of bone. So, you know, before we start surgery, we need to be absolutely sure that the implant can be placed and, and that it can be placed safely. So um, when looking to have dental implant treatment, you know, making sure that you have um, a reputable clinic that deals with dental implants routinely would be highly advisable. Now, what could you do to avoid a lot of these potential problems or complications? The first thing we always tell patients is to listen to your dentist, um, follow the instructions after having any type of dental treatment. Um, if the dentist tells you to avoid smoking, to avoid, well, we should always avoid smoking, but especially after having invasive treatment, we should avoid smoking, avoid uh, consumption of alcohol, Make sure you take the recommended antibiotics or uh, infection preventative medicines. It can be antiseptic mouthwashes. Uh, making sure that we avoid eating on the area, just basically like following the instructions that your dentist has recommended. This will obviously be, uh, will, will help you in terms of the healing phase and will make sure that we can at least reduce the risk of the implant not integrating or any infection setting in to the area while it's healing. So when we undergo surgery, we should really do everything we can uh, to give our body all of the you know, benefits of, of healing. So you know, following the instructions, you know, some, some rest, making sure that we don't um, overstress the area, uh, making sure that we get good rest, good nutrition, and just keep in touch with your dentist. If you have any doubt or any concern that something's not right, then the best thing to do is just to double check, speak to your dentist, pick up the phone, and um, just, you know, it can be a short visit just to make sure that everything's healing as planned. So my name's Bruno Silva. I work at the Brighton Implant Clinic, and um, we work with dental implants um, almost exclusively. We have been doing so for quite some years now and um, if you want any more information by all means please visit our website it's www.brightonimplantclinic.co.uk many thanks